Inês, are you in Brazil, Inês? No, Portugal. Portugal, Portugal yeah, I was like, this. Carizzo. Nice. Nice. Kelly. Maybe we should ask people to rename Carolina with the. See if it goes. Let me get mine. So it's nice to know where people are calling from. Yeah, if you can Irene. bring it yourself and, and put your uh, a flag or where you you are connecting. If you're not sure how to rename your name, um, there, every, we're asking everyone to put their name and where they're joining from. You can use your little settings button when you roll over your photo there and you click that and you should be able to change your display name. If anyone's having any issues, just let me know. <laughs> where are you at, Saeed? Dortmund, Germany. Nice. I'll put a little. All right. Okay, the record is going right, yeah. Rachel. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, we're we're good. Um, I'll give a little introduction to you, and let, let's get going. It looks like we've got everyone in the room here, so we're really excited to have. Uh, Fernando and Carolina with us for this co-facilitation session. I know I've worked with some co-facilitators before, so I'm really interested to hear what they have to share with us. Um, for, Fernando uh, brings a wealth of experience in group facilitation and experiential learning, uh, and he likes to spread the gospel of liberating structures, also one of my favorites. Uh, and he also loves preparing Brazilian drinks for his Canadian friends, which I think I'm going to have to have one of. Um, even though I'm not in Canada, maybe you can mail it to me here in Texas. And then we've got Carolina, and she's a celebrated facilitator and coach. And she's also a former board member at the International Association of Facilitators, IAF, if you're familiar with that. And she has a superb, superb talent for cooking. So we've got both the, the food and the drinks covered here in this duo. And so I'm going to go ahead and pass it over them to start us off at this session. Thank you for being here. Yeah. Thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Rachel yeah. and Maria. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for coming. And so we we like to start like going through like a, a, a portal. And to be in this portal, uh, I would like you to just stop your video for a while and just feel your feet on the ground and just breathe it will be a breathing exercise but also while you were breathing just think about the first people that was in the land that you were living in right now who are those people so breathe very deeply and so you inhale and hold and feel your heartbeats and exhale. And if you want to just stretch a little bit and stop any tension that you may have in your body, shoulder, neck. And when you are ready, just open your camera and be present here with us. Yeah, we like to do that because we have people in different time zones and some people are just awaking and some people are going to bed, so. <laughs> yeah, some drinking wine, some drinking coffee. Yeah. I'm gonna put some, some information in the chat. So if you have the chat open, it's good. And I see that uh, people are already writing the chat, which is awesome. So we are going to be here for 60, 60 minutes, so one hour. 
and just be aware of all the distractions you may have uh, in your surroundings or your devices and just be very present and it's nice to have paper and pen the old way to take notes but also you have the notes here which is a very good thing um the notes in a in a bar you can open it to take some notes and also chat use as much as you want and just to start to using your notes you're gonna think about what is your intention for this one hour together so just take a note for you private you don't need to share with anybody Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> Flight plan? Yeah, over to you, Fernando. Okay, the flight plan is... It was actually funny when Ana Maria got in touch with us to discuss, okay, we're doing about the mixer, what can we do? And then we discuss about some topics. And when I saw co-facilitation, oh, I can talk about this. <laughs> so yesterday we we had our anniversary, 20 years of marriage, and our company has more or less the same time. So we have been working and raising a family together for 20 years. So far, successfully. So we, we can talk a little bit about like negotiation, flexibility, and these kind of things. It's funny when a, like a consultant goes to a company to talk about communication and negotiation and he's on his like first or fifth marriage or something. So it doesn't make sense for me. Anyway, flight plan is in the chat, Carolina, the agenda. No, I can put it there. So we'll be just closing out the opening and centering exercise, disorientation. We'll have you in a talking triads with some questions and then it'll be just talking maybe between 12 and 15 minutes about we what we think it are the core elements for our co-facilitation. And then we we'll ask you to contribute with this list. So maybe you know something that we, we also need to learn. And then you'll be, where's the chat over here? Yeah, you'll be harvesting your conversations and then it will be closing. So quick and simple. So I've popped the questions that you're going to do in your breakout rooms in the chat there for you. And they're also listed as your tasks in your breakout rooms. Um, and uh, I didn't, and did you have any other instructions for everyone before we go in breakout rooms or do you want me to send them? I think they, yeah, I can send them in triads, six minutes. The questions are there. Okay. All right, does, it, does everyone understand what we're doing? Yeah, okay, Good. we'll go ahead and send you to your breakout rooms. Good. Awesome. Is everybody back? Marty, yeah. it's coming, okay. So I think I'll start presenting, right, Carolina? Yes. Okay. Yeah, these two questions, we, we put them there just to get your heads around this topic. So we will not harvest these questions, but maybe in the end, probably they will come up again. So if you have any insight, anything to share, keep it on your notes because you'll be listening to this on the end. Or if you yeah, want to write in the chat, it's okay too. If yeah. you're desperate and want to share, so please write in the chat. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you have the cards, Rachel? Yeah, they are the cards. So why co-facilitation? <laughs> so actually, when we, we never negotiate this with the clients. So that's one thing that we have been doing since 2005 or six. Oh, the group has eight people. Okay, we've been two facilitators. And sometimes the clients say, but why? Because that's the way we do it. And we, we never mm -hmm. negotiate this. So, and some people ask, but why do you have two facilities? Sometimes it's, uh, you have uh, like more costs, you spend more time and resources preparing and it's, it's harder 
right? But why? Because it's better, in a summary. We can have more perspectives, we can have more conflicts in a positive way. We can grow. So if you have someone watching you, facilitating, they can give you honest feedback later. And also you have variety. So in our case, I'm a male, Carolina's female. So we all always have something better than we when we are alone. So that's why we do it. That's our option. So we keep doing this way and nobody ever questions us regarding like price or anything like that. So we keep doing and adding to that, I think it's uh, it's important also because we have an agenda, but sometimes we feel that the the group needs another thing. So when you have someone to talk to, said, okay, what do you think? Or what we should do now? So then you can change and 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 have better results for the group. And one change more thing to add, group. Carolina, before I hand over to you for the the first topic. It's nice to co-facilitate with someone who always agrees with you and it's like more or less like you, you know? That's easy. The, we are talking about co-facilitating with someone who is really different from you, different style, different perspective. So can be a challenge because we, we don't agree all the time, but that's the, the thing. That's the co-facilitating in our perspective. We are adding, not just having two people doing the same thing. Carolina, first thing that we we think it's important to have. Yeah, because you are with another person. So self-awareness and self-development, uh, we think it's very important. Because if you know your limits or if you know your strength, it would be easier to talk to this person and say, oh, I'm good on that or I, I'm terrible on that. And so then we can we can figure out the best way to facilitate together. So we we think that is uh, something that you have to do very consciousness uh, this this self development, and and it's ongoing process. It's not something that it starts and and it's always ongoing. So if you have a co facilitator that you use to do that a lot. It's easier because you can you have more time to to talk about those kind of things, and but sometimes you have someone. Okay, you have to facilitate with this person, and you just get to know this person, and then you said, okay, so who you are, what do you like to do, what is your comfort zone, and what makes you stressed, or so what is your what your soul can embrace. I like that that question. And then the person, and then we can know each other. And then we can say, okay, you do this, you do that. And then we can move forward in our facilitation. I think it's anything, Fernando? Yeah, and no, maybe okay. just one thing to add is the Enneagram. It's one uh, knowledge. It's a uh, self-awareness knowledge and practice that we have been using Enneagram since 2006. And actually, we sometimes we say that it helped to keep the marriage going. <laughs> and and so, also we yeah just yeah we we used to work with more than fifteen facilitators back in the days. So we pair up them. So how we pair up them was through enneagram and other things, other tools. So who is gonna work with who? Yeah, who is a yeah. good uh, complement. And in terms of cross perspective, we we are very different. So we we recognize that we are different, and we don't want to change the other one, the other person to be like me or Carolina to be. So we we keep our differences, and these different viewpoints are very important to to add to the to the scenario to the facilitation. So, for example, I come from one city and Carolina is from another city in Brazil. It's like San Francisco and New York. People are different from these cities. And it's nice to have this uh, different perspective. So gender, we are different. Mindset, we approach differently. And you can guess who is who. So the approach, some people want to, to see the whole picture. Some people, no, oh, no, let's check this part first. The focus, more on the process of the facilitation, more on the people this personal resonance, what is happening on the mind, what is happening in the heart. 
So we have different approaches. We can go to either side, but we have a preference and we keep using this preference to, to add. So that's one thing. This list just keeps going on. And it's, we rarely have the same position on this perspective, which is nice. Yeah, and, and when things uh, go sideways sometimes, it's interesting because, okay, so I know his point of view and he knows my, I mean, at least like I'm more spiritual and he's more material. I look to the whole and he looks to the part. So we can we can just get together and look at, oh, how we are going to, what we are going to do now. And so it, it's good. When we have what is that. better in this moment? Yeah, what is better in this moment? It's someone with like a, a serene voice. Sorry? It leads to the point of communication and conflict. Carolina, stop yeah. doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in the past I had some fights. Uh, but but now I, I know kind of by like uh, tele, telepathy, I can I can read what yeah. Fernando is thinking. But so, I remember um, we looking at each other through the group like... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> so communication and conflict so lots of conflicts and sometimes we, i i remember once that one time that it was fernando and i and another facilitator the three of us and he said something to the other facilitator but not to me so i give a different instruction and for the group and so then we were fighting and the group was working and the other facilitator was like <laughs> what should I do now? And <laughs> so that was back, back yeah. there. I don't know, like fifteen. Years I remember ago. some facilitators coming closer to us. And, I think you need a moment. I will be away and come back in fifteen minutes. <laughs> they just leave and come back. So, but then, like we like learning how to um, communicate and also how to. What do you mean by that? I mean, we are married for 20 years, but we need to know, okay, so what do you mean by that? Oh, I want to do this. Okay, awesome. But what? why do you want to do that? Why? What do you mean uh, about this thing or that? And also like, okay, we are not agreeing, and, and, but how we are going to transform a conflict that can be negative into a positive space. And all conflicts have like the, this friction, so the energy. So if you bring that energy in a positive way, so everybody's going to gain something here. The group, the facilitators, and, and also the other facilitators. So sometimes you have like a group of 10 facilitators with us. So this is very interesting to, to see and to understand because we have lots of people, lots of communication, and we can have a lot of misunderstanding. So this is very important to be clear and to ask. And, and the other one to be open to, for the, the, the question and, and answer as much as we can. So, And Rachel, open. these conversations, sometimes they happen in front of the group. So, and it's, it's normal, it's like a conversation. So today we can handle this, I think, easier, in an easier way. Yeah. And also we, to, to, now we, sometimes we, we, in the beginning of the, the facilitation, the beginning of the, the event, we say, okay, we are going to whisper out loud. So then we do that and the group is with us. Should we do this? Should we do that? We plan this, but we are fe feeling that the group needs this, what we are going to do. So this is something that we, and, and it's so good because the group feels the participation and they can collaborate. And sometimes we ask the group, what do you think? And then what do you need? Yeah, one thing that I learned along this process is to let it go of my own ideas sometimes. So I, I created a habit of making proposals for the group, already waiting for like a, a big no. And when they say yes, oh, okay, let's go. But it's a no, okay, well, it's just a suggestion. Sorry to take our time with my dumb suggestion. But usually when we talk about roles and responsibilities, besides we are co-facilitating, someone needs to be like the lead in the process and the other person is following and we can take turns. So it doesn't mean that one person will be like the, the boss and the other will be obeying, 
but one person it's responsible for sometimes to lead the agenda sometimes one person it's responsible to be with the client all the time while the other facilitator is working with the group this kind of thing we we share these roles and we always change things so I can do this this time. Maybe this client is more connected with me than Carolina and vice versa. So let's mm -hmm. switch this and it's fun. So it's like changing clothes. Sometimes you can use a, a, a clothes that doesn't wear comfortably or you don't like it, but you can wear for a while. So <laughs> you feel weird and fun for a while and then, okay, let's put my this shirt that I like. So we always uh changing experiment with this that's how we can also grow and learn something different yeah but it's nice when you can do something different but you have a backup <laughs> so you have the other one that okay I'm, I'm trying something new for me here so but you know that there is someone there that can help you if you you know like if it is too uncomfortable for you so and give you we, I think we, we feel yeah we, we feel more um open to explore and to do different things and feedback loop is something that is very important and is related with the the what I start talking the 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 self development uh so we talk a lot so feedbacks I think it starts in the preparation during so in an event and also after so sometimes when something, but we, we have this agreement with, with the facilitators. Okay, is that okay for you if in the middle of the event I, I'll give you a feedback? Yes, it's okay. Okay, so then we, we keep doing that during the event. And, and, and after, it's more okay, so what happened and how we can get better. But during the event, which is sometimes you have to be very careful with the communication, uh, it's good because the person can just realize, okay, I did this, this happened, and I can move forward in a different way. And then you are right away there and you are, you know, with the group and helping the group and helping yourself as well. So it's like, it, it's very nice when you, we have that. And yeah, and after, I think it's always um, a, a big talk. I mean, you can have as much time as you you want or, or you have. Yeah. And when we leave the meeting, we come back home. So <laughs> we still have time to talk. In Brazil, we used to drive. We lived outside of Sao Paulo. So we have long drives to, to do the work. So commute was a big thing. So usually we, we, we go to the meeting, preparing the meeting, and we come back from the meeting, preparing the event, discussing and taking notes. And we don't do any, this anymore. We do things remotely now. But back in the day, we had like a couple of hours in the car. You can't escape. You have to listen to that feedback. <laughs> so it helped. <laughs> we did it, Carolina, in 14 minutes. So these yeah. are like the summary actually that was very nice and thank you Ana Maria and Rachel for inviting us to discuss this because we had to discuss okay what are the core components so we, we get lots of ideas and then we summarize in these topics and these are things that we really keep very close to our hearts to keep this co-facilitation going because it's part of our business model if I will be working alone I don't know exactly how it will be without someone like Carolina or someone similar to her to be like my partner in, in, in this process. So I, I always rely on this uh, partnership. Time. What else, Carolina? <laughs> Time to... Yeah, so it's... To discuss. Yeah, so it was a very nice thing to think about what, what we can bring to you and what it's the main pieces, the main important things that we think about, but we want to know about you. So uh, what else in your own experience is fundamental for co-facilitation? And what insights, questions, or story do you want to share or comments you want to share? So we're going to have um, 10 minutes for it could this. could be a two session. triads and a quartet. Yeah. Rachel, do the magic. 
Yeah, I think um, we have it set to four people for a room. So if I change it to group size of three, it should do what we did last yeah. time. I'm gonna send everyone to the uh, to the rooms. And just to reiterate, you're talking about insights, questions, and stories related to your own uh, co-facilitation or thoughts about co-facilitation. And I'm gonna go ahead and send everyone out to the rooms now. People, you on board, Ksenia. The conversation is so good in the breakouts. I'm not coming back. <laughs> I'm sick of All you right. too. Stay with my friends. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead and start the poll here. Yeah, we'll be collecting this. Uh, this insights, questions, and comments, and then we'll be opening to the groups to share. So let's see with what comes. You can add multiple answers. So if you submit one, you can submit another. Um, if they don't all have to be in one block, and then you can vote for other people's comments on there once you submit. Maybe if your screen is really small, like if you're on a laptop, maybe you need to scroll down a bit to find the text field below the image. What are we doing again? Sorry, I missed that. We are collecting uh, insights, Irene. So after conversations in breakouts, what are some of the insights, questions, and comments you guys had? So we're putting those into the poll, and then we're also going to share some of them out loud. Thank you, Ana Maria. Cool. Thank you. That's co facilitating. <laughs> <laughs> so you can give the thumbs up for the comments that we like, right? Once you submit your first answer, you will see all the other answers um, and you'll be able to thumbs up up to three of them so we can see what's bubbling to the top for us to discuss. And let's let's give a let's give about another minute here on the poll. I'll set a quick little timer for us. So you can get your answers on and after that minute, we'll go ahead and chat. So I'm gonna get a little uh, timer and music going here. So time's up here. I'm going to go ahead and end the poll so we can see what bubbled to the top. Uh, just so you know, you probably muted you, Fernando and Carolina, once the timer went on. So if you need to speak again, you will probably need to unmute yourself. So we'll end and show results here. And it looks like the one that's at the top is knowing each other's strengths. So I don't know if we want to start with that share back. I'll pass it back over to you, to uh, Fernando and Carolina. <laughs> and also the weakness, right, Carolina? Yeah. <laughs> what you're good at and what you are terrible at. So don't do that again, Fernando. <laughs> no, and also what uh, sometimes is like, oh, the, the group needs someone more with more energy or the group now needs someone with like uh, more serene 
or so it, it depends on what's happening with the group we can use ourselves in service of the for the group so like i have a, a more calm energy and fernando has a more like energetic kind of energy and he's more sarcastic and he likes to make jokes so he's very his humor is amazing uh, and so we we play with that so knowing each other's strength i think i think it's it's good because we can play we can serve the group better let's listen to the groups can we see the groups uh, ana maria the names of each group in an easy way no we can go back mm. to the so maybe what maybe each group can share back some of the things that surfaced for them some of the main things that 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 you that you guys have discussed yeah put, put some more words to the to the things you already added into the poll mm -hmm. who wants to maybe who wants to share who wants to start i just gave saeed Sorry. the mic he Mic drop. Thanks a lot. Yeah, uh, I was <laughs> in the group that has me in it. Um, how, however, I would, the first point we actually discussed in our group, and it's not only about um, knowing each other's strengths, but uh, as you already um, said, um, there are things we are more comfortable with than the other. So if there's something you don't like, everything you know in a, in a work, so there are things that have to be done. There, are, I don't know, monitoring the chat, for example, um, or doing other other tasks. And if there's somebody who actually likes it, to just um, keep the people um, entertained or engaged in, in in the chat. Just as an, as an example, why should I do it if I hate it and you like it? Um, just let's talk about it so everybody has uh, his or her role and her strength that they can add to to a workshop, for example. Um, yeah. And just openly talking about it, or we also had like observing each other. I mean, I can join a workshop or a meeting of, of somebody and just so get a feeling of, of him or her in life in action and in the free wilderness to, to see how how it would work out. Thanks. Thank you. All right, we've got uh, Gracie. Hi, I actually want to say I just appreciate what Irene said um, in our earlier group when she said that co-facilitation is like a dance. So you have to go with the flow and, like I said, be spontaneous. Thank you. Thank you, Grace. Thank you, Grace. All right. Um, so, so it doesn't look like we have anyone else in the queue, but if any, we are actually almost at five minutes here to go, but if, so if we wanted to wrap up, but if anyone has any last they want to add, you could pop it in the chat since the poll is closed. Um, and someone was asking about the scroller on the poll. If you just hover over it and use your regular scroll motion on whatever computer you're on, your, your mouse or uh, trackpad, there's not actually a scroll bar. You just use your scroll motion when hovering over the, oh, she might be on mobile as well. Did you have a comment, Saeed? Um, I, I would have a question, maybe not directly question. related, but to, oh, yeah, yeah. But, but to the <laughs> topic of co-facilitating. Uh, co-facilitating is a luxury. You don't always have somebody. And uh, I jokingly said, um, I'm not married to any of my co-facilitators for 20 years, so it's, um, it's a different uh, it's more difficult, I guess. My question is any tips um, or ideas or insights if you don't have the luxury of always having a co facilitator, how to make the best out of it? Um, so kind of... you, you can always use the group. So that's one thing that, for example, you, using your own example, sometimes we ask people in the group who are very good taking notes. Okay, take over the chat and make notes as people go and usually there is someone in a group who has this ability so we start bringing the group to help you in the, the facilitation process and that's one thing that we believe that the more we give space for people to facilitate while we are the facilitators the better the group goes and the better they evolve as a group and they get rid of us so we can be fired <laughs> they they mm -hmm. can do their own thing so co-facilitating also... with the group 
Yeah, and also I can see lots of facilitators and, and consultants, they are all alone. And when we get together, people are so craving for sharing and this kind of thing. So to expand your, your networking and see who you you want to work with and, and just say, oh, I do you want to work with me or, you know, like and have like the, this a try to find people. I just find that we, we did a research and people we we realize that people are very alone. Facilitators are very alone and they don't want to be alone <laughs> and special lab report says that yeah well. yeah it's true yeah. so why not we just you know grab all this uh, uh networking that we have and, and and ask people invite people who wants to someone xenia yeah xenia oh, I I don't know if oh, it is... hi guys yes you did thank you so much usually people struggle uh with my name uh just to um uh, kind of provide feedback to Saeed's uh, question. I facilitate mostly alone, and I so I design the curriculum, I design the workshops, I facilitate them, the three-hour workshops for six weeks, so it does get tiring. Um, so what really helps me is uh, creating a framework um so using uh using a system for creating and approaching each workshop so introducing of course the learning objectives uh the activities so that i make sure that the workshop is has the it's activity based and it's social interaction based so i have a, a framework i have a uh, like a google doc uh, or excel spreadsheet um, where I will put in all the information for this workshop, uh, what kind of activities, what are my learning ob learning objectives and so forth, the types of activities, how much time I'm spending, just maximum three topics. And then contrast really helps because it's tiring. Uh, uh, my, my workshops are mostly like, um, they're almost like top down because I'm teaching skills uh, to newcomers uh, for newcomers. So we break up the activities. So I make sure that, OK, I'm introducing we are starting the discussion with uh, reviewing homework or whatever else feedback. So there's some social in group discussion, social interaction. Then we are covering material. Then there is the exercise where the folks are writing either in the chat or in the Google Doc. Then we're going in the breakout rooms. Then we have social discussion. So I have a framework for this. Uh, and it really helps to kind of shorten the time, reduce the fatigue, and make sure that I remember, OK, yes, I have to have an activity. I have to have social interaction and so forth. I see we're closing, so I'm closing too. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Zenia. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, you know, you know, we've just got a little kind of uh, checkout question that you can answer in the chat as we wrap up here. And I'm going to pass it over to you, Fernando and um, Carolina, to kind of talk through that and then we'll wrap up. Oh, nope. Oh. <laughs> yeah, don't don't hit don't hit uh, close. There we go. <laughs> On it there. There you go. So the, the question here is, what's one thing you're excited to explore further after our session today? Please so write go ahead. And, go ahead. Thank you. Yeah, right in the chat. <laughs> Thank you so much, Ana Maria and Rachel. It was awesome to, to be here. And the preparation with you was awesome as well. So I think <laughs> most of the, the joy, it's before the session, we have lots of fun. <laughs> yeah, thank fantastic. You. <laughs> thank you for joining us. And then um, Anna Maria has written a little bit of what we have coming up here. Next with the Butter Community is our series of new show and tell events, which I'm really excited for. I don't know how many I'm going to be able to attend, but I'm going to try to attend, I think, all of them. How many are there, Anna Maria? <laughs> Five. 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 Five hosts, and they will take us behind the scenes of the way they designed, launched, and then further iterated um, based on the feedback they got from participants. We're mainly looking at cohort-based courses, synchronous group, uh, live sessions, trainings, and so on. So um, it's going to be a really good one behind, peeking yeah. behind the scenes. 
Hmm. And and I see uh, we've got some connection uh, links in there. If you click see pinned messages in the top there, you can connect with uh, the speakers from today and also go on the Butter community and learn more about what Anna Maria was just talking about with show and tell. And if you're looking for a co-facilitator, you can do some networking over at the Butter community. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Fernando and Carolina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you.